everyone, it's Nicole again here, and today we're just gonna start from the basics on a logic game. Um, and I'm gonna sh walk you through how I would approach to setting up a game. As we go through this, go ahead and diagram it with me. And then once we are done with this logic game, I want everybody to go try PT38 game one. It's gonna be very similar to this. And there's a goal time of 9.55. All right, so here what we have saying here is, a camp counselor calls the groups of students, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So I see that we have eight groups of students here to get their lunch one at a time. So this one at a time here is a hint that we're going to be putting these in order, right? Because if they're going one at a time, there's gonna be one that goes, then another one, then another one, etc. The order in which the students were called is consistent with the following conditions. So before I even go to the questions or anything, I'm gonna start diagramming what this logic game looks like. And so what I would always do is I would write out what my variables are. So we pulled those from right here. I'm gonna write my variables out on my scrap paper, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first rule and see what I can determine. And so here it says, E gets out at some time before both G and H. G and A, I'm sorry. And if I asked you what that meant, you would just say, yeah, E goes before G and A. But what's important here is, do we know who goes first between G and A? Not necessarily. All we know is that E, so I'm gonna draw an E. All we know is that E goes before both G and A. So that's why I'm gonna draw it like this because there's no, right now, there's no relationship between G and A. It could go E, it could go E, G, A, or it could go E, A, G, just based on this first rule. All right, so let's go on to our second, which says A gets out at some time after H. So sometimes these are tricky, right? So if we think about this, if A is getting out after H, who's going first, A or H? H, because we're saying A gets out after H. And so what we wanna do is we wanna connect this rule right here. Sorry, that was a little bit confusing. We want to see, do we have any variables that are the same here as previously? And so we have an A here and we have an A here. So what we wanna do is we just wanna connect this. And so I'm gonna draw another caret here and put H before A. And so what this means is, so let's ask some questions here. Is there, do we know who goes first between H and G? No, that was kind of a trick question, H and G, because there's no line between them directly. This technically could go E, G, H, A. It could go, like I said, E, G, H, A. Um, it could go E, H, A, G because there's no relationship between any of these. The only relationship that we have is that we know that H has to go before A. But like, here's another question. Could H go before E? So could we have H, E, G, A? Absolutely, because there's no relationship between these two at this moment. All right, so let's go ahead and Continue on. So for number three, what we have is D gets out sometime before E, but at some time after B. So while we're starting out on these, if you're struggling to understand this rule, break it into two. So if we say D gets out sometime before E, what we're saying here is it goes D before E. And then, so we have this part taken care of in our diagram. So now let's just read the second half. But D gets out sometime after B. So what that means is that B is going before D, right? Or I could draw it that D is sometime after B. So if we want to put our D down first, just to think about it, sometime after B, we're like, oh yeah, B is coming after, or B goes before D. And so here, once we get really fast, do you want to be able to connect these two rules here where you could read rule number three and say, okay, D is sometime before E, 
just like we have right here, but after B. So I'm just going to write the B here. So essentially what I have where I just wrote this number one right here is the same as number two. These are saying the same thing, just number two is a little bit more clean. So now that we have this, we have to go into our diagram and look and see, do we have any of these letters anywhere? We don't have B, we don't have D, but we do have E right here. So what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to just put or connect these rules. So we're going to put D and then we're going to put B. Nice. And what I should have been doing as I was going along is as I do a rule, if I have a rule that includes a certain variable, I like to put a little dot under it just so I know that we've used it at least somewhat. And so like for rule number one, we used E, G, and A. I'm just going to go through and put a dot under those. And then for two, A and H. Three, D, E, and B. And so like if I was looking at this quickly, I would look, see, oh, we haven't used C and F yet. But let's go through the rest of these and see if we use those. All right. So then for number four, it says C gets out sometime after E. So if we write C down, C gets out sometime after E, so we know that E is coming before C. Um, and so this one's a, we have E here again, so I'm going to go ahead and just add the C in after it. Nice, nice. And then for number four, B gets out sometime after F. So if I write this down, B gets in sometime, oh, sorry, sometime before F. So B is coming before F. And so all we have to do is come up here and add our F. And so now this game is completely diagrammed. Some things that we want to check is do we have any floaters? A floater is just a variable that has no restrictions. So we don't have any rules that are pertaining to it. But here, as we can see, there's a dot by all the letters. So we don't have any floaters. So everything has some kind of restriction. Um, some important things that whenever we're looking at this diagram that before we go into the questions we can consider are, so what letters could go first? As you, you want to get really quick at this, what letters could go first? And so whenever we're determining this, we want to look at the variables that do not have anything to the left of it. And so here, the only variables that do not have anything to the left of it are B and H. So B or H could go first. Um, and then you want to think about what could go last. And so we want to look to the variables that do not have any, any carrots to the right of them. And so here, the variables that could go last technically are F, because there's no line to the right, G, C, and A. All of those could go last. Um, and so here for the last question is, what is the earliest and what is the latest that E could go? And so how you would determine this, so if there were eight spots, I wouldn't actually draw this on the test, but just for a visual, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. If we have E and we're trying to determine the earliest that E could go, we want to see how many letters have to go in front of it. And so we have D and B. So E could not go first or second. And then to determine how late E could go, we want to see how many letters have to come after it. Well, if G, C, and A all have to come after E, we know that E cannot go in the last three spots. So technically, the only spots that E could go in this game are third, fourth, or fifth. And so these are the kind of relationships you want to start to be able to recognize from your diagram. You don't want to be diagramming just the diagram. You want to be doing it so whenever you're looking at it, you can see a huge visual to see where it goes. So, that, so you can do this quickly during your test. So next, for example, if I asked you, what is the earliest that G could go? Whenever you go and find G, so... Here's G. If I asked you what is the earliest G could go, what your first step, six, seven, eight, would be to count how many letters half they must come in front of it. And so it's one, two, three. 
So the earliest G could ever go is fourth, but is there, there's no behind G, so G technically could go in any of these spots depending on what the question is asking for. And so these are the kinds of relationships you want to start thinking about as you're graphing these games. And so now let's go ahead and have everybody go try PT38 game number one. Seven Sage has a gold time of 9.55. You're gonna find the setup to be very similar as the one that we I just walked you through. And hopefully as you start diagramming your logic games, you can cu start cutting down on that time. And if you're interested, please subscribe for more LSAT tips and hopefully you'll find these helpful.